its own advantage. Okay, is my screen visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Good. So, welcome to the first lecture of advanced electric drives, and uh, I am the instructor of this course. So, from the previous semester experience and no other things, what we have got through online teaching is that most of the things will be covered during the lectures and some simulation exercises would be given to you. So for your practice, particularly those who are in campus or those who would arrive to campus in you know, coming months, they may get to see some things in lab as well. So I would try to keep things like that so that you can have experience of all the theory at the lab as well. So typically that will be the approach. So these, there are some prerequisites when we are talking about this course. Of course, this is advanced vector drives. So which means there must be some basic understanding that you have, you should have before starting this course. So that includes basic power electronics where you should know a little bit about semiconductor devices, DC DC converters, DC to AC converters, or vice versa, and some basic pulse width modulation techniques. It's not necessary that you need to know all, but some idea about this will also be good. In fact, I will cover most of these things during the lecture. So you will get good understanding about all these things. And if you have good understanding earlier itself, then you may discuss more things in that. You may interact better. Okay. Now, something what you must have done during your undergrad or no, first uh, semester or during your masters for those who are doing PhD. That is the basic electric drives where some DC motor drives, whether it is open loop control or closed loop control and some understanding about the AC motor drives. So basic open loop control V by F or something. If you have done great, if not, you may revise a little bit. But anyway, we will cover all these things during the course. OK, now the course content which I am going to cover during this course. Is first we will have a good review of the basic motor drive. So understanding basically like what is motor drives and what are the important components of motor drives and what do we need to do to have a good performance no, whatever is desired from the motor drives. What do we need to do? Do we need to design some controller or even the open loop control is good? So we would see all these things in the basic review. Then we will have open loop and closed loop control of induction motor drives. We will review the pulse width modulation techniques thoroughly and we will approach towards some advanced PWM techniques. This also we would see during the course. We will have permanent magnet synchronous motor drives. So largely the closed loop control over here, then the BLDC drives, SRM drives. Some portion we may dedicate to this current source inverter fed motor drives, but this is optional. It depends on how well the class is grasping the concepts. And if we get time, we will go for this and some advanced control techniques like the direct torque control, etc. So this depends on how you are performing throughout the course, how well you are moving along with me. And then we will have a case study, for example, a practical or no a life example where we have a motor running some particular application. For example, say some electric vehicle or some traction load that we will study through this uh, simulation and some experimental results as well that how the drive is operating what is expected from it to or uh, no to perform and how it should be so this this case study we will keep in the end fine some of the suggested books which i do recommend during the course so not all but at least some you should refer particularly the book which is given in the end control of electric drives this Werner Leonhard uh, book so this is very good for getting the basic understanding about drives. So a lot of modeling and then how to design controllers. These things are discussed thoroughly in this book. So you can consider it's not a very heavy book. It's a small 
uh, very uh, handy book. So you can have here in library or somewhere on the e-library, you can get this book very easily. But apart from this, there are standard books like GK Dube or the uh, Murphy, this Paul Electronics Control of AC Motors, then Bimal K. Bose book, then Ramu Krishnan, and another Bimal K. Bose book. So these also you can refer for solving some of the examples, some of the exercises. This would be useful. Clear? Any confusion here? No, sir. No, sir. Good. No, sir. Good. Now, how this course is distributed? Let us say when we are talking about this whole semester. So generally we will have three contact hours for the lecture. So you know which are days it is on, right? So what are the days? Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Yes. So don't miss the timing 10 to 11. That's what we will follow generally. If there is any change due to some other commitment or some other you know, unavoidable situation, we will shift a little bit, but it will be according to your convenience. It will not be at any random time. Then we have two hours of practical, which is basically consisting of the simulation exercise. So this is on Wednesday. So it's two to four, right, Pooja? Yes, sir, two to four. Okay. So these are the contact hours during the week. So we will get roughly like five hours. And during this lab, actually, we may either do the simulation exercise or discuss something related to this, or we may discuss some of the assignments which, uh, which are given for the lectures. So those assignments may also be discussed during this. So this two hours you consider like you know, something as tutorial and simulation board where you can discuss some of the problems which you are facing during the assignment solving or during the simulation or any general understanding. So utilize these two hours for thorough discussion on any topic. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some response. So you may keep your mic on unless it is very noisy at your end. OK, now the distribution for marks. So as of now, it is like this. We, have, we will have 15 marks given for the classwork. So basically assignment. So some typically 10 or less assignments would be given during the coursework. Then we have PRS, which is basically your simulation exercise. There would be five simulation exercises throughout the course. So that will consist of 25 marks. So you need to take it seriously. And then there would be midterm examination, which would carry 20 percentage of the marks and then end term examination, which will be 40 percentage of the total marks. So you need to be really sincere throughout the course if you are doing this and to keep you prepared. This is going to be a little heavy course so that we learn good things over here. It is not just another course where you just come and sit in the lecture and go back. This is not going to be like this. So if you are having too heavy coursework already with you, you may opt for going out from this course because I'm again telling you this is going to be a heavy course where the focus will be more on learning rather than marks. Marks will automatically follow. Am I clear up to this point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, good. Yes, sir. Now, let us start with some of the basic applications what any electric drives may have. So whenever we you know, go for working on some uh, something, let's say, for example, power converter or motor drive or anything, we need to know where it is going to be applicable. Because unless you know the application, you, not, you cannot design the system. So some of the important applications I have mentioned, you may search out some more. So one very important application is electric propulsion, which you see nowadays in terms of electric trains or electric vehicle, even going for the you know, ships or aircrafts, all these things are coming in this. Then we have pumps, fan, compressors. That is another very important application, which is like power ranging from all the way, you know, from 10 kilowatt to 10 megawatt. 
so we have huge power range covering these applications then somewhere we see some small power application in the power of this plant automation let's say any manufacturing plant or something is there we may see lot of motors or controllers employed over there for automating the system automating the manufacturing process so there may be servo motors there may be pmsm there may be induction motor several range of motors we may find in this then there are some very high speed applications which are spindles and other things grinders these kind of things so there the speed may be very very high then of course the aerospace we have talked about then robotic actuators mostly with servo motors then cement industry steel industry paper and pulp mills so some of these may see a varying inertia kind of load so where the j is changing continuously so under those conditions if we have to ensure good performance for the motor drive we need to have very robust design for the controller then automotive application which i told the propulsion kind of thing then even for some very challenging uh, applications where we have mining or underwater uh, applications where there may be some harm to the motor drive if it is not designed properly okay there may be some spark there may be some explosive environment so we have to have a good motor drive which can operate in all such difficult conditions then conveyors elevators escalators all these where we have to maintain a constant torque typically so these kind of applications are also there and then power tools may be there like cnc lathe machine or something you know, these things could be there and some heavy like big antennas when we are rotating for space application and all that so these are typical applications what we see for any motor drive so here when i have talked about application it is not specific to a particular motor it is for all the kind of motors which are generally utilized in any application so this could be induction motor dc motor pmsm bldc srm or any other specific motor so all these things we are discussing over here am i clear yes sir yes sir yes, fine sir. right yes, sir. yeah yes, sir. keep your mic on so that we can interact better now if i ask you what is the first thing that comes to your mind when someone says electric drive what do you understand by electric drive yeah some answers system used for motion control okay one answer is coming as motion control okay can we not control motion through the mechanical engines also yes sir then how do you using do? using electric motor Hmm. Yes, sir. So then the answer comes that there must be some electric motor. Then we should call it electric drive. But is having electric motor enough? If there is a motor kept somewhere, would you call this call that electric drive? With the load. Okay. There must be load. Is this enough? the power electronics converter power electronics control. okay very good so now we are coming to for example let's say you all have these ceiling fans in your homes no so you don't call it motor drive it has of course the motor as well and the load is also attached the fan blades are connected so that's not called motor drive or electric motor drive then what is called electric motor drive so we should first know that what are the basic components of electric motor drive so first answer came is that there must be some electric motor then the next thing was there must be some load attached to the motor then another thing came up that there must be a power electronic converter okay is this enough controller is also required to control the switches 
of power electricity another very important aspect coming up that there must be something to control the operation of this motor which means we are not going for something called as uncontrolled operation let's say fan you switch on and it runs you do not say that such and such particular speed must be there at the most you can set the regulator to different numbers let's say 1 2 3 4 but that doesn't say that what will be the speed of the fan so there must be some type of control now control for what what that controller would do what which part it would control sir speed no no speed is okay but to which part let's say three things are given over here to which part you will put the controller on would you put the controller on the motor or on sir, the motor sir we give it to power or the motor yes so controller basically is attached to the power converter for what giving the appropriate trigger signals or the gating signals you understand the point yes sir yes sir okay now again is this enough is this enough uh, no sir what else should be there sir sensing of current and speed is required very good so there yeah. must be a sensing unit which is also needed for the control now one option is that we are sensing the current and voltage say from this side okay so there could be voltage and current sensing happening for this electrical connection what is coming between the power converter and the electric motor do we sense something else also yes sir yes, what low from the load speed, speed speed service sense so there may be sensing of speed and, and sometimes uh, torque as well and sir also or the position. position position yes sir okay so these are all optional okay or we may sense all for some other a particular purpose then what else is needed there is something very important missing in all this structure supply something without Source. which it cannot run at all input supply. input supply sir yes there must be a power source for the power converter and particularly electric power source which will be feeding the power converter understanding my point now if we have power source we may sense the voltage and current from this side as well isn't it sometimes it is required to sense the voltage and current of the input also then with all this vi sense from the source side vi sense from the power converter side or motor input terminal and then omega tau and position sense from the load side all this information has to be fed to the control unit understanding my point and then on basis of all this information the control will generate the gating signals for the power converter but this would also need some reference let's say it must know that what is the reference speed at which you are trying to run it at or what is the reference torque that you want to maintain this at or the position so either of this one information is needed to the control then it would keep that drive in such manner either at constant speed or at constant torque or at constant position out of fixed position you can say understanding my point yes sir now this yes, whole yes, unit yes, what we are saying typically this is called electric drive sometimes you may omit the power source you may omit the load so largely this section having the sensing unit power electronic converter and the electric motor 
this is generally called or widely called as the electric drive and we are not talking about no, such control units such as rheostat controlled or auto transformer controlled these kind of things we are not talking about we are particularly talking about the power electronic controlled power electronic converter controlled electric motors so then these are some of the important components in this is that fine yes sir yes sir yes sir this is yes, the sir. general structure of any electric motor drive which we would discuss throughout the course and we would go into details of each and every part of this now the first and very important part of this whole structure is electric motor okay now when i say electric motor which all motors come to your mind what are different types of motors can you recall some names synchronous motor dc motor and also ac motor so let us start from sequence dc motor when you say dc motor generally it could be either separately excited or self excited or third option could be there may be a permanent magnet on the dc motor fine then let's move further ac motor no then ac motor there are many so we will go classification wise let's say induction motor induction. so induction motor typically again two types squirrel cage induction motor or doubly fed induction motor now next could be synchronous motor so again either it could be pmsm or the dc excited okay there may be other classifications like symmetrical rotor or no oh, salient pole these kind of machines but largely let us Chilean. broadly classify the motors in this manner then moving next reluctance motor which one reluctance motor yeah so that is switch reluctance motor okay there may be again different types of pole configuration 6 by 8 or something no many configurations could be there so these you can typically called as pulsed supply motor the supply or the current given to these motors is kind of pulse it's not continuous current like a ac voltage or ac in, uh, current it is like a pulsed one pulse is given then another pulse is given like that it goes now what else could be there crossless dc motor yes BLDC is another very important motor which is used for lot of applications. So this is to call this is DC, but generally it is controlled through the power electronic converter. And only due to absence of brushes and performance similar to DC motor, it is called brushless DC. Any other motor can you recall? Uh, synchronous Synchron reluctance motor. Yes. Synchronous reluctance motor. Okay. Further. stepper motor stepper motor okay stress is control so linear induction motor yeah that is part of induction motor but okay let's name it also some linear motors so linear motors could be induction or it could be sometimes you, know, you may have some portion as magnet on the path so pm type or synchronous type so different configurations of linear motor could be there fine yes is that fine yes sir anything else you want to add good so think about if you want to search for more motors you can go and search through the literature if anything is missed out 
and generally all these motors no we either go in open loop control mode or we operate in closed loop control mode isn't it that's the general way of operating all these motors if broadly we classify some motors are actually operated in closed loop control mode only broadly no oh, sometimes even if we go for closed loop control we need to take lot of precautions and lot of arrangements need to be made so where are some of the motors like induction motor can be operated in open loop closed loop control or dc motor easily in any of the control mode so we have different types of motors and their way of controlling it now moving to the next part so once we have this motor the next important part is say power converter or power electronic converters now when you hear this name power electronic converter what name comes to your mind or what types or classifications come to your mind so for example dc to dc converter could be there again within dc to dc converter we may have buck converter or boost converter or we may have buck boost or we may have some isolated converters or sometimes the classifications go in different manner like one quadrant or two quadrant or three quadrant or four quadrant uh, these kind of classifications are also there so these are all dc dc converter when we say basically what we consider that the input is coming as a dc voltage or current and output is going as dc current or voltage understand my point yes sir yes sir so and also when we are saying this dc dc we are of course considering the bidirectional power flow option as well we are not excluding that the second classification could be dc to ac now many of you must have read something about these type of converters right so what what may be the different types of dc to ac converters voltage source inverter current source yes. inverter so first major classification could be either it could be a voltage source inverter or it could be a current source inverter now if we further classify the voltage source inverter what different classifications could come that it could be either two level or multi level isn't it yes or no yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir within multi level what different types you may have sir uh, neutral point neutral point clamped yes then cascading hp inverter capacitor clamp hmm that is sometimes called as flying capacitor yeah then cascading hp inverter ah uh, h bridge ah uh. then then hybrid types of something hybrid type so mmc sometimes this is also called yeah modular, modular multi level converter so these are different classifications for the multi level converter now the third type of converter which we may see power electronic converter that may be called as ac to ac converter so here generally we see the matrix converters coming into picture so of course when i am saying dc to ac the ac to dc is also covered right so one side you have dc another side you have ac voltage or current understanding the point so there may be different combinations so all the complete spectrum i have covered over here fine yes sir yes sir now anything else are we missing here are we missing anything here good the phase no, control is there which one ac to dc 
Yeah, AC to DC is covered here. Oh, by oh, yes. Sir. Hmm. Everything we are talking by directional. Now, to run all these converters, no, we may have lot of uh, techniques. So generally, these are called as pulse width modulation techniques. We will go into the details of each and everything during the course. But here we are just reviewing what we, what terminologies we know or what terminologies we understand. So pulse width modulation, there may be several techniques. So I'm combining all multi-level, two-level everything for the voltage source converter. So we may have something like sine triangle PWM. Then what other name comes to your mind? Space vector of PWM. Space vector. And the space vector is much broader. So we may have to specify, we may have conventional space vector. Then some other bus clamping, advanced bus clamping, or any other thing would be part of this. Okay, what else could be there? Uh, carrier based PWM tech. Yeah, this is sine triangle. When I say basically this is carrier based. To be more generic, it could be like this could be included with one more, which is called harmonic injected. And these two combined can come under the carrier based something. A uh, selective harmonic elimination technique PWM. Yes. So SHE PWM is another technique which is generally employed for particular elimination no, or elimination of particular voltage harmonics, harmonics uh, or something uh, like that. Uh, then there may be more specific PWM techniques for, let's say, minimizing the current harmonic or minimizing the torque harmonics. So these are called optimized PWM techniques. Fine. Anything yes, else can you recall? Good. So search for more if you can find. Okay. Now moving towards two things now are left, three things actually. So when we are saying power source, what type of power source we may have for our system? We don't have much options over here. So considering both AC or DC, so we may have either voltage source or we may have current source. These are only two options what we have. Fine. Anything else can you suggest on this? So we will go into details and discuss more things during the course. Now, the control unit, what we have discussed, that is another part. So what different types of controllers do you know about? which are employed for drives application. Do you have any names in your mind? PA controllers. OK, that is part of no open loop or closed loop control. Here I'm talking about the hardware control board. So for example, DSP is one control board. There may be many classifications in that. Then there could be FPGA based boards. Then there could be ARM processor based boards. Understanding my point? Several yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. D space. D space, D space is. D space is there. Opel RT is there. But generally, I do not recommend you to go in that direction. So I would stick to these three. Okay, where you have much more flexibility to do things. Understand the point? Okay, sir. Good. Yes. Okay. Now, the other part, which is basically the sensing unit. So when I have said sensors or sensing unit, it has lot many things, right? Voltage sensor, current sensor, speed sensor, torque sensor. So let us tabulate all these voltage, then second maybe current, then third maybe speed, 
then fourth may be torque. When I'm saying voltage current, this includes DC or AC. Then torque, then there may be position. Then what else could be there? Do we need something else? Some other thing to be sensed for our control application. Do we need something extra? Sir, uh, maybe environment and parameters. Yes. So environment basically means the temperature. Temperature sensor, yes. Sometimes if temperature is very, very high, it is recommended to shut down the drive or at least run at some degraded power level. So that is why temperature sensing is very, very important in many of the industrial motor drives. Then some of the drives which are controlled you know, or which are cooled through the liquid cooling unit, say water plus glycol, these kind of solutions. So there the pressure is also sensed for the cooling unit whether it is able to maintain adequate amount of water flow or liquid flow or not. So this may also be part of your system, motor drive. Anything else can you think of? Okay, think about it. Fine. Now, coming to the last part of the structure what we have seen that is called load okay without load what you will do with the drive so what are different types of load are there that you can think of? I'll, anyway, most of the things I have discussed already in the application part, but still just to recall few. Constant torque load. For example, fan oh. or blower load is one thing, right? Yes, sir. Then what else? There could be some electric vehicle that may be considered as load. Then what else? Uh, crane. Elevators and conveyors. Elevator. Yes. So elevators or lift of or conveyors. Okay. What else? See these things you have Machine to think. So you have to understand that. This is not just something which you are mugging up or just memorizing. You have to feel that where and how you are going to use this particular thing. So what application you may have. So there may be a robotic arm we have seen. Okay, there may be some other thing. So these we are talking about different types of loads in terms of and then there may be mills or no rolling mills or something. See when you talk about fan or blower load, this is basically what? it increases the load increases with the speed and not just linearly it increases in proportion of the square of the speed you understand the point then something called as elevator or lift you may consider like many a times this torque or something or load is kept more or less constant because you cannot keep on increasing the speed ever like you are balancing something let's say this lift is there this has some force due to gravity so you have to only balance this force that is all to balance this and maybe some delta extra f plus so that it moves up so more or less this is kind of constant load constant torque load or something like that understanding my point the nature is different from what a fan would provide and what the lift would provide. So we need to be careful while designing the motor drive. Then conveyors and belt, this also, this may demand some, sometimes the omega should be constant irrespective of whatever load you are putting on that. Understanding my point? So here the load may be 
intermittent. Sometimes load may be there, sometimes it may not be there. For example, the belt is carrying some people or conveyor or elevator. This is carrying few people or it may be running vacant. But the speed must be constant. Understanding my point? Then robotic arm where we are more concerned about no, only some small change in position. We are not very much concerned about a particular omega or particular torque or something here. We have to move very precisely. The error in position cannot be very high. You may not even take a full rotation all the time. So maybe a theta or delta theta some kind of rotation you may have. Then rolling mills sometimes may have variable J kind of load where you have some no, arm or something on which the paper is getting rolled or cloth or something is getting rolled. So the, this will keep increasing, the size will keep increasing, but still the speed has to be maintained constant. So this is some kind of variable inertia load. So different, different types of load we may encounter in you know, our application, whatever we have discussed so far. Electric vehicle load, when we say this is kind of composite load. The meaning of composite load is that sometimes it may demand constant load or constant torque. Sometimes it may demand intermittent high torque. Sometimes it may have omega square kind of dependency on the torque. Sometimes it may have some change in inertia also either people sitting on the vehicle or not sitting. Understanding my point. So this is one composite type of load which is there for our application. Am I clear? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. we will discuss all these applications and how to handle such loads, how to handle such systems, how to design our controller such that any of these parameters do not affect our system at all any of these disturbances or anything do not affect the performance of our motor drive. So we will discuss all these things during the course. Fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, out of all this structure, whatever we have seen in this block diagram, we will start with load because irrespective of whatever motor you are having, whatever power converter you are having, whatever source you are having, whatever control board sensing unit you are having, load is something which can be attached to any type of this thing. You cannot have DC-DC converter for induction motor. So there has to be some rule followed for these combinations. Whereas load can be attached to any such unit. So if this is the driving unit, any load can be attached. So this is a kind of common thing for any driving unit. So which is why we will discuss the load first and we will go into more details of what are different types of loads, some you know, examples we have seen and then which of the systems are let's say inherently stable or unstable, these kind of discussion we will do in the next lecture. Fine? Yes, sir. So yes, as we yes, go slowly towards the final things, let's say discussion more about motor drive control and all these things, I would suggest that you brush up some of the previous lectures you know, or your previous classes or courses little bit. Those will be helpful. So all the different types of uh, whatever things are required, we will anyway discuss. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any questions or doubts you have so far in whatever we have discussed? Any questions or any doubt you have?